What is going on? How's everybody doing? You doing good? Hopefully, for the shoe. So, I don't know if I. Ah, that doesn't look that. It does look a little bit bright. Mm. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this. I got this sore gun right here. My pistols are all too busy being scoped out. Hopefully I don't throw some shit out. Here we go. What's going on everybody? Jay Hayes here. Today I'm be doing a review on a device that I was sent for the purposes of the review. So the last thing that I did for EH Pro probably would have been the Kelpie RTA, which I did for Vaping with Vic and EH Pro. And I was extremely impressed with it. Aside from that, this is one of those companies that isn't really a big, big name. Like they're not known all over China to make a lot of products. I want to say that they're Billows, the V2s. Oh my God. All their original renditions of RTAs was amazing. Then they just kind of fizzled out, and now they're coming back again. The only mod that I can think of is that dual battery jammy that had the two different configurations, so you can fire one coil or the other, and it came with the tank, the yellow and black one. If you haven't seen a review for that, I'm just going to post a link up there. So today, the product we're going to be going over is called the Cold Steel 200 Watt Device. This is what the reviewer called Nebelfi or ne ne Nabelfi. I have no idea how to say his name. Basically, he's a German reviewer. I think he does a lot of high-end stuff, but he's not really, really big into the game. Like, he's not a very well-known reviewer. Well, at least not to me. He may be to other people. This mod is $95. I'm hoping that when I open this up that there is something about this that really, really takes me back to make me think, okay, why is this worth $95? in a good way, not in a bad way. Because I have this thing where the SX Mini G-Class was, I think 150 or $175 first came out, and a lot of people considered that high end. While I would say that it's on the higher end of stuff to come out of China, I definitely wouldn't put it in a high end block. And I'm not quite sure that that's what EH Pro was thinking about when they were making this device. I can tell you this, without even taking this out of the package, that this package with the mod inside of it is extremely heavy. Like, this weighs a lot, and it's not a kit, it's just the box mod. So without further ado, let me bring this down, show you everything inside of the box, all around it, and let's flip it. All right, so what we're looking at is the Cold Steel 200 watt mod. I'm assuming that this is the gentleman right here, Mr. Nebelwolf, Nebeliffy. You'll see what I'm talking about right here when I show you. This is his name right here. Very, very difficult to read. I can promise you that that either says Nebeliffy. Hold on. I can't get a focus. N-E-B-E-L-F-E-E. -E -E. Nebelfi. And then Cold Steel 200 Watt Mod. Keep in mind that this is from the company itself. On the other side, EH Pro, and then a UPC. Color configuration up here on the top, black and gold. No idea why they sent me that color, considering I really do not like the two of those combined. I much prefer a black and silver or just a raw silver. On the other side, same exact thing. That's on the one side, and then your model, and then a QR, and then the security code for the said such device. Back side of the box. Go ahead and give that a freeze frame for you. Wow, that is a lot of paperwork. Okay, so the first card inside of there is your warranty. Fill that out, and then you send that over to them. QC Pass, which we're just going to avoid, because a lot of these companies, all they're doing is just kind of printing that already on the paper, as you see right here. And then it's laminated on top of that. I don't know why they just don't not include this. There's really no point, because if you do have this inside of the box and something is wrong then how did it pass QC? And then a user manual looks like recycled paper of some sort. Very, very, very large. The box mod, we'll go over that shortly. Wow, that is heavy. Instead of it being a micro USB, it is actually a USB-C connection, which we're seeing a lot of mods do now. Again, this is more of a connection for data, but I guess if you're charging with it, it'll charge a little bit faster. It's more safe than a micro USB as that is a little bit outdated. Again, although this is a micro USB-C, anything that you're gonna plug into your mod, it would be safer to take the batteries out and put it into a charger versus using a cable like this to charge your device. And then even the box is golden black. 
So the box mod comes in this little sleeve, and then there it is. This mod is very, very heavy. This is a Wismac Gen 3 Duo with two 18650s in it. 212, 213 grams. No batteries inside of this. 208. So that's without any batteries in it. And to put batteries in it, that's pretty cool. I'm just going to tell you right now. Three hundred and six grams on all four corners of this. You're going to see the gold screws. Apparently, there are no scratches on this whatsoever. A couple little fingerprints, not terrible. Don't see any scratches on the black at all? Not even on the screen or the buttons. Very, very nice. I really do not like any of that gold whatsoever. Micro USB C here located on the side. I'm really impressed that there's no scratches on this. On the bottom, designed by E H Pro and Nebel. Whoa. Mr. Neebs, that's what we're going to go with because I have no idea how to say that name and I don't want to keep tearing it up. To take the batteries out of this, they have this little button located here. You press that, that's going to push up. Even if there's no batteries inside of this, it still springs up. See the spring right here? What concerns me is in due time of you closing and opening this, this will eventually wear down. So how will this maintain its sturdiness in staying stuck after doing this, whatever, let's just say 200 times? Now you have to do something where you're going to rely very heavily on some type of tape to keep that together. And there's your spring. Okay, so your door does move a little bit to the left and right. It is very, very sturdy nonetheless. Battery orientation is listed on the plastic part of the battery door itself, positive, negative, and then down there on the bottom again, positive, negative. 25 will bring us right out to the edge, literally. Adjusting the power. Very nice, and it does round robin down. One, two, three, power, back. Volts, very nice. Bypass, curve, temp, back to power. Go into temp, and then you have your nickel, TCR, titanium, stainless steel, and then go back. Very, very easy. And then you go back to power, you click that, and then you have normal, strong, or soft. Leave that on normal. Press the up and down together. That will lock the mod. And what that does is literally lock it as if you were to turn this off. You cannot fire it or adjust any of the power until you unlock it again, which is the same button configuration. Just like that. Then if you want to lock the up and down, you press the up and the fire button. That still allows you to fire it, but you cannot adjust the power. And then to unlock it, same configuration again. If you press all three together, the screen will actually go into a stealth or dark mode. And then when you fire it, it'll light up, you let it go, it goes back off. To turn that back on, you just press the three again together. There it is. There's something I want to mention with this that I think is very, very, very important. On the bottom of this, you're going to find four little rubber grommets. Now, what that does is on a material like this, it's going to do nothing. However, on, let's just say, a phone, right, as that sits on it, watch this. It goes on. It's very grippy. You don't have to worry about it sliding about, and you'll see that it's kind of stancing down. That's not the right word, but standing in place. It's planted. A lot of the times you'll get it, it'll be all metal like this. That is something so minuscule, but to think about that, that's nice. I don't know if they did that because the screws that were in there were causing things to be scratched up, but attention to detail. That's very well done. And I just noticed that as I put that on my laptop and realized it didn't really move around. I feel like more companies should think about that. I just feel like more companies should think about that. For instance, take a look at the Wismec Gen 3 Dual. There's nothing. So when this goes on, it's very slippery. But because this is skinny and tall, you really need those to plant that down. Very, very nice. Let's bring it on the top. Here we are, back on top of the Cold Steel 200 Watt by EH Pro and Neville Web Shiver. And sitting on the top of that is a Zurich X. This is 90 watts on a 0.56. Here we go. A ramp up time. Holy cow. Oh, man. 
it's a little bit better. Okay, so let's go over it. First off, let me just show you some vapor production because a lot of the times people are like, you know, you're reviewing this product and you didn't even vape it that whole time, dude. What the fuck, man? Yo, that ramp up time is fast. Okay, okay, the biggest thing we have to talk about is obviously the aesthetics, the golden black. I don't know why EH Pro had sent this to me, but this may be one of those companies that don't really watch a lot of my reviews, and to be honest with you, I don't know if I would blame them. However, let me just say that I would much prefer this in a silver and black configuration than I would gold and black. I really like the rubber grommets on the bottom. What I don't like about this is the fact that it's $95. $95 dollars that is a lot of money for a proprietary chip and just a dual battery 18650 the screen looks to be a little bit outdated and maybe because the reviewer that it's attached to is why it's 95 i have no idea i am legitimately trying to find the reason as to why this would be 95 dollars and i come up with nothing According to the manual, there's supposed to be a limited edition of this, and the limited edition comes with a 510 and 810 drip tip. Now, I don't have that to really judge what's special about those drip tips, and I'm not really quite sure what the price point of the limited edition is. What I find peculiar is this is called the Cold Steel 200. There's also a Cold Steel 100, which has no affiliation with this reviewer, as it is another reviewer, Ambitions Vapor, which reminds me a little bit of the SX Mini SL class. Granted, I don't have it to really judge it, but it's just awkward that the both of those have the same first name, Cold Steel, and then one's a 100, the other one's a 200. Are the reviewers aware of that? That there's two products with the same exact name? There is something very positive about this. EH Pro did very good with the machining of this. Not a scratch, not a ding, not a dent, anywhere. And it is black. And funny enough, when you're talking about an RDA, it's much easier to hide something if it's black versus if it's stainless steel, you'll see it. Well, with this, there's a lot of gold everywhere. So, the gold brings out scratches more than what silver does. I don't see any. I would love to find some, but the gold is very shiny. <sighs> this golden black thing. I'm having the hardest time removing the golden black configuration in my mind to rate this. Because I have to say, ah, it's not just about aesthetics. Even looking online, the only other configuration I could see is gunmetal and gold. And then you have black and gold. I don't see any silver and black. That would make this that much more badass. This mod is not something you're going to put in your pocket and totally forget that you have a vape. Because you're going to need a belt. This thing weighs a lot. And I'm having a really hard time justifying that it's $95. Look, I don't find any flaws with it whatsoever, aside from just the screen being outdated. The push button for the door is absolutely innovative. I really, really like that. Just $95, man. That is a reach. It really is. As much as I want to factor the price point of this into the rating, I can't. Let me explain why. Some people have $95 to just throw away on whatever mod, and the value of money is going to be dictated by the person that's buying it, not by everybody else. However, I can tell you that I have a lot of high ends. I have things that are super expensive. I have things that are super cheap. I feel that this should be in the $60 to $65 region tops charging 95 dollars for this in my mind i want to give it a lower rating but i'm not going to i'm going to say this in the fight huh i i can't i can't ignore the price i really can't i'm trying in my head to ignore it i i can't i have to factor it in so if i was to rate this on a zero to ten i'm going to give it a 4.5 to a five if it was 70 dollars or 65 i would probably bring that 5.56 50 to 60 bucks all day 7 7.5 the price point is what's killing this mod nothing else well i mean the screen is outdated but some people don't give a shit as long as it works there's a lot of functionality behind that little itty bitty screen but i guess the reason why they made the screen so small and thin is because they're trying to make the mod as skinny as possible for a dual 18650 but why is it so heavy it feels like it's made out of zinc alloy however 
they list it as stainless steel. And it kind of makes sense because it is very, very sturdy feeling. I feel like if you drop this or threw this, it wouldn't break. It may dent up a little bit, but man, this thing is beefy as shit. And then the final thing that concerns me is this door. Taking these batteries out and putting them back in and doing that over and over and over again, that button, I promise you, will wear out. And then what do you do to keep it together? It's not like you could just re-thread it or tap it. There's nothing you can do. You're going to need to put some kind of tape on it. So if you're going to have that securing fashion, there's not a lot of recommendations I could give to make sure that that works consistently forever. 300 grams with two 18650s? Yeah, this needs some weight reduction. Maybe some horsepower stickers on the side. 15 horsepower, the sticker adds, something like that. You know, this sticker adds five pounds weight reduction. This is a spicy meat to ball. I've kept it real. Have you?